Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. My next guest. While we're in the presence of the Lord. Oh, yes, God. He is. And trust me when I tell you this. He is the, the next spiritual giant in this country. Maybe from Africa. But what God is doing in this man's life in America. And I want to say to every woman. We only have a few seats left. For Bishop Duncan Williams. Prophet Vereen. My son. We will be ministering in the women's revival. And I told you that the Lord called me to call 5,000 women. He said, this, is, this one wasn't for the masses. It's for the women that the Lord is getting you ready for your next level in Him. And I don't want you to miss it. Go to our website. You can call our ministry and register for this revival that's going to be in Orlando, Florida, November the 1st through the 4th. You don't want to miss your time of deposit. This next man of God that's going to be ministering in our women's revival has spent about three or four weeks in our prayer. And we want to use this last 35, 40 minutes to give to who I consider to be an apostle of prayer. He's known for prayer. He's known for the Lord using him in levels and operations and raising the dead and open up. And I'm not talking about I heard raising the dead, opening up blinded eyes, unstopped ears. Let's hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying to the prophet in this hour. Bishop Duncan Williams. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, prophetess. I used to watch your brother Tom and your mom anytime I visited Tom and preached for him in Chicago uh, for many years and I said what is the secret of your sisters and I and uh, he said mama prays and girlfriend prays and I watch you over the years and every time you've been on television and I've seen you what comes out is not just the teaching of the word but there's the presence of God and the anointing that destroys the yoke and you don't find too many folks in this part of the world with that kind of anointing and success is not just what you have or how much money you have in the bank or what you drive or how many folks you have come to your church but it's the things you've been through and overcome survive and still anointed you know so when I came to the prayer in New York and I saw at five in the morning place was packed overflow was packed and people crying out of God with that intensity I couldn't believe it because I preach I have 15 I'm on my 15 passport right now I travel everywhere in the world and uh, it's it's only in places like Africa you can see that kind of intensity of prayer. You don't see that kind in this part of the world. And that explained, and I, I, I kept telling everybody, I said, I understand the woman's anointing now because what they have there in New York is no joke. That thing is strong, it's powerful. And I want to say to every one of you here, hearing the sound of my voice, if you really want to tap into prayer here in America, that is the place you got to go. Yeah. I'm telling you, you got to be there before five because if you get out five, there'll be no place for you to see it. I mean, it's strong. And you saw some of the miracles that took place while I was there. As much as I get so many miracles, some of the miracles, that white lady, she had a surgery and they removed her eardrum. Right. And the doctor said that even with hearing aid, she can't hear. And the Holy Ghost gave her a creative miracle and gave her a new eardrum. Yes, you know, I mean, mind-blowing miracles. You can't explain it. Tumors, fibroids disappearing from women's body. I mean, women with a big stomach. I mean, just things just happening and suddenly they cry out and say, look at my stomach, look at my stomach. It shrank, right. it shrank. I That's mean, right. all kinds of mind-blowing miracles. And it's because the atmosphere is prayer conditioned. When the atmosphere is prayer conditioned, anything can happen. Yes. And one of the things I want to say, Prophetess, that as much as we need folks to pray, 
we got to go past the place of prayer to the place of intercession because prayer just deals with an individual and his relationship with God but intercession takes you go past yourself right. where it's not about you but it's about what is on God's mind for individuals uh, where what is on God's mind for communities for cities for nations for churches uh, for generations even yet unborn where you can buy into the mind of God and download into your spirit and pray through on the earth realm what God has on his mind prayer is the vehicle that goes into eternity and takes what exists for the believer in eternity into time uh, prayer is the only thing that gives you access into the throne room of the father to be able to know God's original intent and to be able to pray it down to the earth realm uh, I want you to hear me carefully because this is very important uh, we live in very dangerous time prophetess we live in very dangerous time uh, this country is being threatened by so many things that uh, politicians can handle. Uh, the battle that this country and so many nations are facing are spiritual and the only solution and the answer to some of these problems is the church rising up to the place of intercession because there is so much that politicians and our security agents and intelligence can do uh, it gets to a point and they can't go beyond there and that is where the church must rise up the situation in Iraq for instance cannot be solved by our soldiers the church got to rise up as the spiritual army of this nation and declare a ceasefire yes. in the spirit because it's a spiritual warfare yes. if you look at if you look at the first world war the first world war was orchestrated from the realms of the spirit there were forces everything you see in the world the good the bad and the ugly there are powers behind the scenes responsible for what's going on and the church got to take our eyes off the natural and begin to look into the supernatural and find out who is behind this what's going on who is behind the situation with south korea who is behind this situation with iran for instance provoking this great nation to engage this country in another war the third world war it's not going to be nations fighting against nation if the church do not pray it's going to become a religious war it's going to be a religious war and that is what the enemy is setting nations for and the church got to rise up and understand few things number one prophetess god can do nothing for humanity until somebody prays it is illegal please hear me it is illegal and it is unlawful for god to act among humanity without intercession now the reason is because he gave the earth to man and man through high treason gave it to Satan so Satan second Corinthians 4 4 is the God of this world that explain all the mess going on that's why you have atheists, people who don't believe in God and the reason why they don't believe in God they are sick and tired of hearing just God is a good God God is a good God and hearing all this good preaching and see people dying of cancer seeing young women young men dying leaving their kids without being cared for and then they keep on hearing the same preacher saying God is good and God is a good God atheists are not going to get saved because we preach good and we witness you don't witness to wait atheists they must see power when they see power that settles the controversy when it comes to when it comes to Islam you don't witness to I have a lot of folks who have converted from Islam into my church I was just in Cape Town a few weeks ago in South Africa in Good Hope Church in Cape Town and a whole Muslim family the entire household God saved the second night when they saw the power of God in action and saw how God healed the child that was dying when they saw that the entire family came in and they came to the service and received Christ it, it, with the church God to stop this is the day of Elijah and the day of Mount Carmel it, 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 it's, it's let the God that answer by fire be God or let's forget this then because if we can't demonstrate you see a good lawyer prophetess that knows win his case in court because he's good with the law and because he is articulate but a good lawyer wins his case by backing his argument with evidence now the gospel must have evidence and the evidence of the gospel is signs wonders and miracles the Bible said and Jesus taught and Jesus preached and Jesus healed the sick and Jesus cast out devils if we preach 
and teach and we don't heal and we don't cast out devil that is not a full gospel we are joking and the reason why the world is dying churches ain't growing prophetess like before people are leaving one church to another church i mean we're just transferring people from one church to another but if we are going to have true conversion and people coming to god we need the power of god to come back to the church and the gospel is not principle prophetess the gospel is not doctrines doctrines and principles is for the church but the gospel is for the world and the gospel is not good preaching and the gospel is not principle the gospel is not doctrine the gospel is power that's what the gospel is power the Bible said when, when, when Saul on his way to Damascus had an encounter with Jesus, that settled the whole, nobody preached to Saul. Nobody told him you got to get born again. He meant what we need is encounter. I got saved on the bed of affliction. And I'll tell you how I got saved. I was on, I was on marijuana in those days. I wouldn't go to church. And I was crazy. I was just bad. I was born into a family of 43 brothers and sisters. My mother had six, my father had 37. And I was just crazy among my father's kids. And I, I was fooling with witchcraft. I was going to the occult and I was playing with voodoo and everything. And I wouldn't go to church. And one of the reasons was because there was no power in the church. And so that bothered me. And I said, I don't want to have anything to do with this because the malams, the juju, the occult, they can produce. I mean, they can deliver. You go there, you tell them what they want. They tell you what to do and you get results. So I didn't want to fool with church. On the bed of affliction, when I lost three of my fingers, I was attacked by the enemy. And the enemy commanded me to light a candle and to place my right palm on the flame. And I placed my right palm on the flame and my hand began to bang. And the enemy said, don't remove your hand till I command you to do so. My lips were sealed. I couldn't take my hands off. And the demons were in my room. I couldn't see them, but they were speaking to me. And I had them and I could feel this evil presence weighing me down. And I couldn't scream. I was in pain and in agony. I couldn't take my hands off. On the bed of affliction, Jesus appeared to me and said, I am Jesus. And that settled the issue. Nobody witnessed. I got saved on the bed of affliction. And I said, if you are Jesus, then set me free. Because I couldn't sleep for years. I couldn't sleep for days. The enemy wanted me. He was out to kill me. And he said, I will set you free under one condition. That you will preach and witness of my power to the nations. And I said, it's a deal. <laughs> from that night from that night I was set free from nightmare from all those demon spirit that came after my life they couldn't touch me anymore from that night I got saved years after I said forget it I wanted to give it all up and the demons came back again and Jesus appeared to me and I said we made a deal you said you set me as long as you keep to your side of the bargain they leave you alone so I said okay you win you got to understand folks it is impossible and it is illegal for God to do anything for nations, for communities, for churches, for humanity until somebody prays. Let me break it down. One of the reasons why Jesus had to be born was because the legal entry to the planet is the womb of a woman. You can't come to this earth without the womb of a woman. Spirits are not allowed to operate on the earth realm without the bodies of human beings. God is a spirit and he doesn't have right to come among humanity to operate without a human invitation, involvement, or cooperation. Number two, demons cannot operate without human bodies. So God needs human bodies and demon needs human bodies. Now whoever you submit to operates through you. So God is seeking for men and women to operate through. Why is the devil is also seeking for men and women to operate through? Now watch this. Watch this. You got to understand some few things here. God gave man jurisdiction over the earth. The Bible said that there was contention over the body of Moses. And when an angel of the Lord by the name of Michael, who was the minister of defense for heaven, came to protect the body of Moses, the Bible said he dare not rebuke Satan. Now, this was the same Michael who overcame Satan in heaven and fired him. But in the earth realm, he could not rebuke Satan. Why? Because number one, he didn't have jurisdiction here in the earth realm. He didn't have jurisdiction. Number two, he did not have judicial rights. 
and authority. And the reason is because God gave earth to man. So it's only man that have dominion over earth. So angels don't have dominion over the earth realm. It's only man. One of the reasons why Jacob prevailed over the angel was because the angel was dealing with Jacob within the jurisdictions of man. So he did the angel could not overcome man within his jurisdiction. Jesus. So even though he was mortal, he prevailed against a celestial being because the angel was dealing with man within man's jurisdiction. And so when it comes to the earth realm, we have authority. And we can deal with anything that comes out of this planet to destroy this planet. Is anybody hearing me? Say I hear you. Bible said, the Bible says, the Bible says in the book of Ephesians, the sixth chapter and the twelfth verse, the Bible says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but we do wrestle. Yeah. We are in a wrestle match, folks. We are in a wrestle match with forces behind the scenes. Yeah. Now, watch, for instance, the world, the first world war was orchestrated by forces behind the scenes. Assassins were sent to go and to annihilate the Prime Minister of Austria. Every attempt to take him out failed. So the assassins decided to leave town. They gave directions and orders and instructions to the driver and said go out of town through the right. The driver went another route. The route he took, the assassins found the Prime Minister of Austria and his wife in a shopping mall buying something in those days. So the assassin stopped the driver and said the man we've been trying to kill, here he is. And they went in there, assassinated the man and his wife and that was the reason for the First World War. According to history, the driver don't understand why he disobeyed others and went the other route and they found the Prime Minister of Austria and they assassinated him. You know why? It was orchestrated behind the scenes for him to disobey others. He was dealing with man within man's jurisdiction. And so when it comes to the earth realm, we have authority. And we can deal with anything that comes out of this planet to destroy this planet. Is anybody hearing me? Say I hear you. Said, the Bible says, the Bible says in the book of Ephesians, the sixth chapter and the twelfth verse, the Bible says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but we do wrestle. Yeah. We are in a wrestle match, folks. We are in a wrestle match with forces behind the scenes. Yeah. Now, watch, for instance, the world, the first world war was orchestrated by forces behind the scenes. Assassins were sent to go and to annihilate the Prime Minister of Austria. Every attempt to take him out failed. So the assassins decided to leave town. They gave directions and orders and instructions to the driver and said go out of town through the right. The driver went another route. The route he took, the assassins found the Prime Minister of Austria and his wife in a shopping mall buying something in those days. So the assassin stopped the driver and said the man we've been trying to kill, here he is. And they went in there, assassinated the man and his wife and that was the reason for the First World War. According to history, the driver don't understand why he disobeyed others and went the other route and they found the Prime Minister of Austria and they assassinated him. You know why? It was orchestrated behind the scenes for him to disobey others, for him to go that way so there'll be a first world war to kill all those women and children. The church in America got to wake up. 
the church in the world must wake up to realize that it doesn't matter how successful we are how many people we pull in our conferences how good we preach you got to understand something God is not impressed with our preaching because God is a better preacher than anybody God is not impressed with our preaching our preaching does not impress God our preaching does not impress God what impresses God when men and women goes on their knees and they are able to move the hand of God is anybody hearing me somebody say talk to me I dare you in the name of Jesus to understand the legalities and the technicalities if you watch the scriptures carefully church every time God came to earth and did anything for humanity or for the church it was in response to prayer when Peter was kept in prison and the angel of the Lord came to release Peter it was in prayer it was in response to the prayers of the church now if the church had not prayed Peter would have been killed just like James was annihilated you got to understand in the book of Acts the 16th chapter the 25th verse Paul and Silas prayed at midnight and there was a suddenly the reason why there was a suddenly earthquake and things changed and everybody bounds was loose and everybody's doors was open was because Paul and Silas prayed at midnight so things don't happen until we pray is anybody hearing me and as never before we need to rise up as a church in this nation as a spiritual army in in this nation and begin to go behind the scenes begin to look into the spiritual find out who is behind North Korea what's going on in the realms of the spirit what is the enemy up to because all the security intelligence and our politicians don't have the answers it's the church that have the answer we got to go behind the scenes and deal with principalities and powers by going up into the throne room and dealing with them from the heavenly perspective and then we got to deal with the ground troops of Satan uh, on the earth realm working behind the scenes. Take for instance, the other day, Jesus was going to Jerusalem to die. Then, stand sir, elder stand. Now, I'm Jesus, he is Peter, elder is Satan. I'm going to Jerusalem to die. Satan don't want me to do it. So Satan begins to work on him because he doesn't have access to me. He does. And the enemy will always work through people who have access to you. And you got to be spiritual enough whenever something is going on to take your eyes off those around you and begin to look into the spirit and find out who is behind it and what's going on. Say, I hear you. And the Bible said, and watch this, Satan began to work on people. Now keep your eyes on me. And he began to work on me. Begin to touch me. He began to whisper into my ear. Say the whisperings of the enemy. Say the whispering. Somebody say the whisperings. Somebody say the whispering. The whispering. Now you're hearing the sound of my voice right now. The enemy has whispered to you. He's whispering to you. He's telling you you are failure. He's bringing guilt to you and telling you I'm not going to make it. But I came to tell the devil is a liar. Yeah. Somebody say he's a liar. Yeah. Somebody say I'm coming through. I'm coming through. Somebody say I'm breaking through. Watch this. He whispered to Peter to stop Jesus. Peter began to whisper to Jesus. Then Jesus turns to rebuke Peter. And the Bible said, when he turned to rebuke Peter, he didn't see Peter. He saw Satan. And Jesus said, Satan, get thee behind me. Are you hearing me, somebody? I cannot tell you that there is somebody behind the scenes responsible for that situation in your family, responsible for that situation in your community. There will not be, violence will not cease in our community. Drug abuse and teenage pregnancy will not cease in our community until the church rises up and put down our feet. Are you hearing me, somebody? And begin to war against the powers of the enemy. I want everybody to stand on your feet right now. Stand on your feet right now. I want us to lift up our hands right now. I want us to cry out, but I want the women to wail for America, for the allies of America, for the mothers of America, for the church in America, that there will be a wake up call, that there will be a rising up in the name of Jesus, that the powers that cease to endanger this country shall be broken. Somebody, I want the women to wail, I want the men to cry out. Lift up your hands for America. Pray for America. Pray for the peace of the nations. Pray for the peace.
streets of Jerusalem. Pray in the name of Jesus for ceasefire in Iraq. In the name of Jesus, somebody lift up your hands and cry out. all over this place if you're hearing the sound of my voice wherever you are touch the screen right now join with us right now whatever situation you find yourself in in the name of Jesus we command your release we command your unconditional release all over in TV land across the nations of the world let the voice of the Lord echo Satan take your hands of America take your hands of the nations loose the men and women of God take your hands of the church in America let the sleeping giants awake in the name of Jesus son of the living God Adabo If you are sick, if you are sick in any part of your body, I want you to touch the place right now. You touch yourself right now. Hear me out there, wherever you are, whatever the condition is, Jesus is still in the healing business. That is what he, he does. He's still in the healing business. He's still yesterday, today, tomorrow, forever the same. Touch yourself right now in the name of Jesus. Satan, I command you, release your captives. Sickness, disease, infirmities, loose your captives. Fibroids, let them go. Tumors, let them go. Spirit of deafness, blindness, infirmity, disease, affliction, loose them now. High blood pressure, let them go. Arthritis, loose them. Rheumatism, loose them. Low blood pressure, loose them. Paralysis, loose them. Slow, loose them. In the name of Jesus, I command the word of the Lord to come to you right now. I command your healing. I command your recovery. I declare you loose. I break the curse. I go behind the scenes. I bind the enemy responsible for the condition in your body. I pronounce your healing. I decree your healing. I command your healing. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. Hey, 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 hey. Loose, loose my people, said the Lord. Now, watch this, watch this, watch this. 
I want you to examine yourself right now. And those of you out there watching us from the studio, I want you to examine yourself right now. You will realize that something has happened. The tumor has disappeared. You can hear now. You couldn't hear before. You realize that you can hear now. I want you to call the number on the screen right now and give that place with praise report. You need to testify because if you don't testify, it will come back again. They overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. So you need to testify right now. Call that number on the screen if God has touched you and something has happened in your body right now. Hallelujah to Jesus. What a power. What a night. Your life will never be the same again. We rebuke you so me over your life and you will sleep like a baby than ever before. Hallelujah. Bless you, prophetess. What a night. Bishop, I'm telling you, people of God, we have been in revival in Tuesday morning prayer with Prophet Vereen, with Prophet Johnson, with Bishop Duncan Williams, and the revival continues at 2.15. Yes, you, you're you coming back to us October, October 17th the 17th and 18th. and 18th. And every Tuesday morning, we are there giving God the glory and binding the strong man. You anywhere in the area, and you, you know, know that God has called you to prayer. You know, just meet us there at 215-32 Jamaica Avenue. Like he said, get get ready because because you won't, you won't get a seat. But the bottom line of it is, I told told the Lord, I said, you know, I've gone outside uh, in the early years of the prayer, Bishop, and I used to pour oil all on the outside of the sidewalk. And I told God, I said, let your power rain out here on this sidewalk. And I believe that the very fact that the people would show up for the Tuesday morning prayer, God would break a yoke. He would change a life. Amen, somebody. You need to go to Bishop's website. He has so many powerful things. I mean, he has tremendously blessed us. Binding the Strong Man uh, by Bishop Duncan Williams. You want to get this book. The Incredible Power of the Praying Woman. I, I, I don't know if you're putting it on the screen or not, but, but you need to go to his website and get this. I don't know if he had a chance to, to shoot this. Where's the camera people at? I want to shoot this book. Binding the strong man. He has some incredible, incredible mysteries and secrets of the Lord. The incredible power of the praying woman. I'm, I'm telling you, he is anointed in prayer. Praying through the promises of God by Bishop Duncan Williams. And then he has this small book, The Supernatural Powers of a Praying Man. You need to go to his website, order these books, because I'm telling you, God is looking for prayer warriors. Like he said, nothing can be done without the human being being involved. If you want God to change your life and change your situation, it's time for you to pray. Touch three people around you and say, it's time for you to pray. you to pray. It's time for you to pray. Don't forget, you want to get uh, Pastor Alfred's new CD, uh, The Gathering of the Worshippers. And I'm telling you, God is doing some awesome things in the land. The Lord is moving by his spirit. And I, I don't know about you, but I feel even more encouraged. I said to somebody the other day, when God called me to pray, it was the greatest call of my life. It's, it's bigger than the call to be prophetess by them. It's bigger than the call, you know, to be an evangelist. It's the greatest call on the face of the earth. The call to prayer. You know, and not just on Tuesday mornings, on Sunday mornings, the Lord had me to start a prayer in Atlanta, Georgia, and Sunday mornings at 5 a.m. So Sunday mornings at 5 a.m. at our ministry, you can go to my website and push church, and you can get the address if you live in Atlanta, Georgia, anywhere near the Atlanta area. 5 a.m. on Sunday mornings, I'm there. 5 a.m. on Tuesday mornings, we're in New York City at 215-32 Jamaica Avenue. But I'm telling you, saints, you need to start your own prayer in your own house. Come on, somebody. You're watching my television. You need to begin tonight and set aside a place and mark a spot in your living room. Mark a spot in your basement and said every day at a certain hour, I'm going to meet the Lord. Even if it's in your car. Come on, somebody. On my way to work is my prayer time. I'm going to turn off my cell phone. And if it takes me 20 minutes to get to work, I'm going to spend that 20 minutes in the presence of the Lord. Somebody clap your hands for Jesus. As Pastor Alfred come to take us home tonight, I don't know about you, but all I want to do is bless his name. Somebody just begin to give God a praise. Somebody give God a praise. Somebody give God a praise. Hey. Okay.
hand and worship. Bless your name. For all you've done. All I want to do is give you praise. Give you praise. All day. And bless your Come on, everybody singing. Oh, I want to do is bless your name. All I want to do is bless your name, Lord. Bless your name. For all you've done. All I want to do. Lord, yeah. Give you praise <laughs> and bless for the blessings you pour upon my soul for honor and strength <laughs> that you bestow. Love and joy you've given to me for mercy and grace. Every day I see all I do. Yeah, come on, sing with me. I'm saved and secure. Thank God. 